value-based price negotiation, or what's commonly referred to as value-based pricing, could potentially be applied within the Canadian setting. Before I jump into the example, I just want to go provide you with a brief overview of what health technology assessment is. HTA is a multidisciplinary field, scientific research that's used to inform decisions around health technologies. Health technologies can include drugs, devices, population health interventions, but for purposes of this presentation, it's going to refer to technologies that are funded or reimbursed by public drug plans, so pharmaceuticals, and from our case study, we're actually going to reuse test strips, which are currently funded by public drug plans in Canada. It ultimately addresses whether a particular drug or device represents good value for money. Uh, it can happen prior to widespread distribution, ex anti HTA, or after the technology has been adopt widely adopted. Um, it could involve assessment of one particular technology at a time or multiple technologies at, at a time. It's widely practiced in Canada and it's currently used to support reimbursement decisions. HTA processes, such as the Common Drug Review, yield result in implicit price negotiation. So if the Common Drug Review says do not list a particular drug or do not list it a particular drug at this price, uh, a company may go back, reduce their price, and resubmit so it'll gain, they'll gain reimbursement. Some Canadian jurisdictions, particularly the larger ones, have moved towards linking, more formally linking price negotiation processes to HTA. However, no pan-Canadian HTA price negotiation body exists, although there are discussions of a pan-Canadian purchasing alliance underway. Other countries have either, are either using this particular approach or are considering this approach in the near future. Uh, for our case study, I'm going to walk you through just a health technology assessment of test strips that was conducted by CADETH. Um, in summary, about $330 million is expended annually on test strips, about 50% of which is spent on patients who are not using insulin. It's a top five class in terms of total expenditure in public drug plans. We spend more on test strips than we do on all oral diabetes drugs combined. Um, we spend about a dollar a day on test strips. It's about 76 cents per test strip on average. Uh, they use a little more than one per day. Uh, clinical evidence shows very modest improvements in glycemic control. Um, free, based on those clinical improvements, cost-effectiveness analyses found that frequent use of blood glucose test strips is not cost-effective in patients who are using insulin. Cost-effectiveness estimates exceed widely cited uh, benchmarks. Uh, however, if you were to reduce the price of test strips, or the frequency, it would improve cost effectiveness. Based on the HTA, Nova Scotia went out and tried to essentially reduce the frequency of blood glucose, frequency of use. However, they were met with fierce pressure. Had there been a HTA based price negotiation mechanism in place, a pan Canadian body could have potentially went to the manufacturers, multiple manufacturers, and presented them with a menu of options. We will continue to reimburse at this price for patients who are using insulin. However, if, we, if you want coverage in patients who are not using insulin, we will reduce the price to this amount. It's unclear whether that would have been received and how that would have been received by manufacturers. However, it's interesting to note that other countries worldwide actually pay roughly 30 cents per test strips. There are clear benefits of this type of approach. You can reduce unnecessary spending, increase access, uh, you can also reduce pressure from patient advocacy organizations. It's a lot easier for them to come after governments and different agencies about um, access issues, but if you're negotiating a price which will ultimately result in more therapies and improved population health for Canadians, it's a little, difficult, little more difficult for them to debate that. Um, you can leverage buying power with the Pan-Canadian group. You can build off existing HTA capacity in Canada. Canada is actually a world leader, well known for conducting HTA research. Significant return on investment when HTA is linked to price negotiation. In this example alone, for example, CADIS annual budget is about $25 million. This project alone would save over $150 million per year forever. So it clearly pays for itself if HTA is linked to a price negotiation mechanism. And one of the main advantages is your ability to handle bias uncertainty at the time of launch. So when a new product comes out, there's significant uncertainty around the clinical benefits. Using HTA, you're able to manage the entry of that particular technology or drug. So you can say, well, we'll cover it for now, invest, and then we're going to reassess that product down the road when new information comes available, and maybe renegotiate the price based on our findings. 
And finally, there's clear incentives. Uh, for if one of the main advantages of this particular approach, it's going to reward companies that innovate in areas of unmet need. So when there's already treatments available, they're not going to be in that particular area, you're not going to be as rewarded as much under a value-based pricing scheme. It is not without its challenges. Healthcare is a provincial territorial responsibility, so a pan-Canadian group would require some coordination, and that may reduce autonomy of individual drug plans. There's significant heterogeneity. Um, also, one of the key limitations is HTA is currently practiced may not accurately reflect the full value of technologies. So there's issues around unmet needs, severity of disease, caregiver burden, and some of these issues that are going to have to be accounted for. There's no empirical cost effectiveness threshold in Canada. However, other countries are in the process of estimating that, or have estimated that, and Canada would have to do the same if we were to go towards this approach. There's issues around international reference pricing. Um, Canada's ability to prioritize and conduct complicated uh, multi health technology assessments um, and coupled with managed entry agreements could be difficult. And also there's more issues around other clinical areas. I just presented one chronic disease area, others will be more challenging. And it's important to recognize that although pricing, reducing prices in principle is attractive, you have to balance that with the impact on producers, innovation and spillover effects to the broader economy. In summary, um, reimbursement with using HTA-based price negotiation is attractive. I think the majority of patients would be surprised that the cost of a particular therapy isn't based on the therapeutic value it provides. Um, we can build on existing processes, although there are challenges to overcome, and this particular body could be linked with managed entry agreements, which would facilitate reassessments. Thank you. Thank you.